Hi, um, uh, hi everyone. I'm Alessandro Polidori and I work in Netesis, which is an Italian open source company based in Pesaro, in the center of Italy. Thank you all to be here today because uh, I really would like to share my experience with you to try to improve our skills to avoid some problems with uh, Node.js server in production. This talk is based on uh, Fastify, which is a Node.js web framework, okay? Very fast with low overhead, okay? But uh, we will see it in more details, okay? Now, let me tell you a little, a little bit, a little story. Because some months ago, I was traveling by train, okay? Uh, I was reading a book, but suddenly uh, I started to receive some messages from a client uh, that uh, saying to me that something was wrong in Node.js server in production, okay? I started to do something, okay, to better understand what was going on, but uh, I didn't have my laptop, so I SSH connected to the server through my smartphone and uh, started doing uh, some uh, oper user operation, as you know. Uh, so take a look at the logs, uh, the amount of used memory, the load of the machine, the CPU's age, and so on. But as you can easily understand, doing some kind of action with uh, your smartphone, it's not very easy, okay? It's a little bit hard, it's not comfortable, it's a terrible experience. <laughs> Just to better understand, how many of you had this kind of experience, having some problems on Sunday? Uh, okay, <laughs> that's great. And uh, it happened to me just one time, but uh, you know, the only thing that you can do with your smartphone is, is not to resolve a problem. It's uh, the only thing that I can did was uh, to restart the service. In a nutshell, our Node.js server in production started to have some problem, okay? And that's it. And the only thing that I noticed was a high CPU usage. Only thing that I can notice. The application we are talking in this, la in this talk is a web application called the NetCTI, which brings and manage all the phone switchboard functionalities to the end user. For example, to make audio and video phone calls. Okay. Uh, the underlying layer is based on uh, asterisk PBX. And uh, it was born uh, at about uh, 2011, so along the first year of Node.js. So it was a long journey, and the application has, has gone undergone some changes during the years, of course. The application is composed by, obviously, by both client and server, and server backend. And uh, in this talk, we focused only on the backend, uh, at the beginning, it was a monolith because you know you start with a prototype, and then we discover a very quick adoption. So during the years, we have changed to be a modular architecture, and for this purpose, I've used uh, an architect Node.js module. I don't know if you know, uh, taken from the Cloud9 IDE project some years ago. It uh, it is very stable. Uh, but uh, mm, it requires a lot of code. The prototype, so at a certain point, was bad because the code was strictly, strictly dependent, okay, each other. So after some time, we changed it to be a modular. And uh, but come back to the problem because it's the fuel of this presentation. The server has to manage hundreds of thousands of real-time events from the phone switchboard system asterisk in particular, because a lot of phone calls arrive into the system. So it has to manage a lot, a lot of real-time events. So uh, the situation is similar to this, okay? A lot of traffic there is in the system. The, and um, in this situation, I started to see that uh, a high CPU, that, that the, the CPU usage was very high above 100%. And in this situation, what happened? The, the user starts to run slowly, and when this kind of action happens, the user usually starts to click nervously, okay? And this kind of action only makes the situation worse. With only my smartphone, I, 
can only restart the service. Okay? So um, then I started to think about that. What can have happened in the system? What? Try to debug the system in production is always a very bad thing because you can't uh, restart the service, you can reconfigure it, you, can add, uh, you can't add a fake load to it, nothing. So the first step is always to reproduce the problem. And uh, when you, you have how to reproduce, you are at the half of the work. So without going into the details, I reproduce the problem, writing some additional scripts that add some, a lot of fake phone calls using the SIP protocol, okay? At this point, so I, ha I had a, the how to reproduce the problem. And uh, uh, at this point, to better understand who and uh, how he was using the CPU, I used Flame Graph. Flame Graph is a tool by Brendan Gregg and uh, is a graphical visualization of a profile software to, to show to us the most used code path and uh, how many resources it uses. Underline it uses the trace or path based on Mac or Linux. But today there is another tool called 0x, is uh, more easy to use. It's a single command flame graph profiling made by David Mark Clements and um, it offers to us the possibility to discover some bottlenecks on uh, our Node.js process. A flame graph is an aggregated visualization of the stacks sampled over time. Okay? And uh, it tells us uh, uh, the amount of time the process, the function is on the CPU and the amount of time the function is on top of the stack. Sorry. So if a function is on top of the stack uh, more time than the others, probably this function maybe blocks the Node.js event loop, and this is bad, very bad. Each function is uh, represented in this graph by a block, a rectangle, okay, so a block for each function, and the width of the block represents the amount of time the function is on the stack. I using it, uh, using it, I noticed that uh, uh, in some scenarios, in some circumstances, the high CPU usage was due to the REST API service. Okay, I discovered this kind of thing. So, uh, just to be sure of what I figured out and have a, a, an additional confirmation of this, I needed a, a tool, a, a way to reproduce an heavy, heavy load of HTTP requests. And for th this purpose, I used Autocannon. Autocannon help us is a very, very useful tool written by Matteo Collina. It's uh, is, uh, written in Node.js. It works on Mac, Linux, and Windows. It's a, an HTTP benchmark tool. And with it, you can reproduce a heavy load of HTTP requests. So uh, I use it, and uh, I run Autocannon to generate a bunch of HTTP requests during a period of 10 seconds. You, uh, of course, you, you can do also a, a bunch of requests during a period of 20, 30 seconds and so on. You can, you can it, it has uh, many different options to use. And what came out is this graph, okay? A flame graph. And uh, from this picture, you can see that uh, the, um, the most used uh, uh, CPU usage was due to the uh, REST API that is called extensions, okay? And the extensions REST API, wh what is it? This kind of uh, API returns all the information about, F uh, about all the phone extensions in the system. For example, the present status, online, offline, busy, ringing, uh, etc. Uh, all, the, all the conversation that uh, is present on uh, extensions and uh, another time uh, with, with all the details of conversation and so on. Many, a lot of information returns. So the problem is uh, with uh, big installation. For example, we can have a, an installation of 1,000 phone extensions. And um, in this kind of scenario, the extensions API was very slow. So I optimize it, okay, to, to be more efficient, 
but that was not, uh, was not enough. So uh, a tough comeback to me, and because uh, some time ago, I took a look at uh, the Fastify project, okay? So I said, uh, this, is the right, uh, this is the right moment to experiment with it. So, and here it is. Fastify is a Node.js web framework made by Matteo Colin and Thomas De La Vetova, who is uh, here today with us. Uh, it's uh, very, very fast with low overhead. It uh, provides a plugin architecture, very, very comfortable to use, and uh, is focused on uh, providing the best developer experience. Because, uh, as uh, Thomas has already said, it's very important for the um, for the use of the framework. It's inspired by other frameworks such as uh, Express and API. It's open source, of course, and with it you can construct uh, in your REST API in a very easy manner and rapidly. And uh, not only, you can also use it to construct your architecture of your application. So, um, and uh, the, the benchmarks report that is the fastest framework in town today. So I started to, to do some experimentation with it migrating some REST API from uh, my application that uh, was using RESTify library to the faster Fastify. And uh, some words about the architecture, because uh, the NetCTI application is, uh, is composed by client and backend. And the backend is, uh, is this, is, uh, is composed by many, many different components that are independent from each other. Because uh, for, uh, at the time of writing the software, not so many modules was present in NPN compared to today. So we construct an, an architecture okay, to, to load all the plugins file contained in a subdirectory. And this file uh, contains the REST API to expose to the clients. So all is handmade and automatically load. And uh, some component, um, the, the best feature is that uh, each component has its responsibility. So for example, there are some components that communicate only via REST API. And this is the Node.js prox. And for this purpose, I've used RESTify library until today. So I started to migrate some REST API from RESTify to a Fastify in this manner. This is only a, a piece of code of the old code. I, I deliberately cut off to bet uh, reading it. And uh, you require the, the library. And um, this is the mechanism, um, a screenshot of the mechanism to automatically load the, the, all the plugins in a subdirectory. And uh, the, so the server starts initialize all the routes of the request, and then put the server listening on some ports. Okay, it's very simple. The migration of the code, so to Fastify, it's another time very, very simple because uh, the only thing you have to adapt is a small piece of code. And uh, because the previous architecture uh, have had this goal in mind to simplify whatever future migration of whatever component. So it is needed only some line of code. And in particular, you have to require the library, of course. You initialize all the routes of the REST API, and you put the listen server on the listen port. The code is very similar. But take a, take a look at the, the second parameter to pass to fastify, uh, fastify get function, because it's a JSON schema. How many of you uh, today uses JSON schema? Okay. JSON schema is used to extremely optimize data serialization under layer. And this is one of the features because Fastify is very fast. JSON schema is, um, is a description of the JSON data using the JSON format. And um, for this purpose, Fastify uses fast JSON stringify that is very fast. We can see it in more details in the next slide. And that's it. So now we are going to see uh, the results of performance using Fastify. 
and uh, I reported the performance also used uh, the, um, the migration of these API extensions because it's uh, one of the most heavy and the bigger in size than the other. The first test scenario that uh, I used was on a Vagram VirtualBox machine on my laptop. It's a very, very base machine because it uses one single core CPU and one gigabyte of memory. And into the system was configured only 10 phone extensions. I used the AutoCannon to generate an EV load of HTTP requests. As you can see, you can specify the number of concurrent connections, the duration of the test, as uh, I previously said. You can show also the latency data, and uh, you have to pass the URL to be tested. All of these options, of course, have to be on the same line. And this is the result obtained by the Restify library, okay? About 366 requests per second, that is good. But these are the results using Fastify library. We can reach uh, about 468 requests per second, so it's a, a great improvement, okay? I made also, so I also did uh, some tests with 1000 extension, but I didn't report it to, no, to not make this presentation boring, okay? And uh, as uh, I previously said with Thomas, one of uh, the author of Fastify, the performance strictly depends on the system, okay? On the hardware of the machine, on the, for example, it can be the cache of web server and whatever device between your clients and the server. So it uh, can change uh, a lot. But at this point, I wanted to improve the performance even more as I can. Okay, because uh, I thought that uh, the system has another bottleneck because the application also contains a Node.js HTTP proxy because the architecture is this. The client makes the request that arrives to a web server Apache that uh, proxy pass the request to a Node.js HTTP proxy that make authentication and other kind of things and then the proxy uh, forward the request to the specific REST API component that are listening on localhost on a specific port, okay? So I thought that this can be another bottleneck of the system. So Fastify, uh, I searched for it and Fastify offers this plugin, Fastify HTTP proxy, okay? That you can easily add to your uh, application because of uh, its uh, plugin architecture, it's very easy. So for this purpose, I've started to migrate also my Node.js HTTP proxy. These are the uh, architecture that I described. The request arrived to Apache and then on Node.js HTTP proxy that forward the request after the authentication and other kind of operation to the specific REST API component. I started to migrate it and uh, this time the performance has increased a lot about 700 requests per second from 366 of Restify. It's a great result, yeah? And the code is very clean, very clean, very easy to read, very easy to implement. You have also, uh, only to require the Fastify HTTP proxy. You register it uh, with this uh, function. You can add functionality to the Fastify framework. It's uh, the core of the plugin architecture. So you have to specify the prefix if you want. For example, in this, uh, in this case, is as, as proxy represents the proxy with the asterisk PBX system that manage the phone calls. And then uh, there are other components, for example, phone book or customer card or streaming video and so on. There are a lot of REST API. And then you can also add some handler, for example, to catch the request, making authentication before forward the request to the specific REST API component, okay? It's very easy. Just to recap, these are the results obtained uh, from the experimentation. So from the left, you can see, you can take a look at the request per second obtained with uh, the library Restify and the Node.js HTTP proxy, the original HTTP proxy. 
At the center, we can see an improvement of 22% using only Fastify, having migrated only their REST API. And at the right, we reach about 50% of improvement using Fastify and the plugin of HTTP proxy. It's, it's a great improvement, 50%. 50 if, you, if you are a very big cloud provider, you have to improve the performance. Otherwise, depends on the objective that you have, uh, it can be also useless. So, um, it's easy to understand that this improvement impacts very hard in the system. But at this point, I would say, okay, yes, it's, it's great, but what is the real behavior when you deploy your Node.js server on some cloud provider? And for the sake of comp um, or completeness of the result, I tested it also on a digital ocean machine, okay, in a real, in a real scenario. Okay, on a cloud provider. So I used a very basic machine, one single core, one gigabyte of RAM. It's the, the most basic machine, as you can see. And uh, these are the results in a real scenario. We have obtained an increase of 33% of improvements. It, it's great also in this case. Okay. And from the result of Autocannon, uh, we can see that uh, we, have, uh, we have improved the performance from uh, one, uh, 164 to 200, uh, 213 requests per second. And you have also a lot of other information based on percentile. Uh, another thing all of this result was uh, using Node.js version 10 because the underlying system is a net server that is a Linux distribution based on uh, CentOS. It has a huge community of enthusiastic people. It's open source. You can participate on it if you want. It's very interesting. And uh, so uh, in the underlying system, we use the Node.js version 10 taken from the SCL project. Some words about this uh, great feature, because uh, Thomas and Matteo started the project in uh, about uh, 2016, uh, trying to improve the performance of uh, some uh, existing framework, uh, Express, API, Koa, I think. And uh, they discovered that the JSON stringify function was very slow, okay? And uh, this function is uh, very slow, because uh, it's a recursive function, so the V8 engine used underline can't optimize it. And so they created the fast JSON stringify module that is two or three times faster than JSON stringify. And it's faster because it uh, uses JSON schema, okay? So it can construct some function to uh, extremely optimize the elaboration make underline. Okay. And you can use this on schema also to obtain uh, other objectives. So for example, to validate the data uh, sent and received, you can uh, automate your testing and you can prevent also leaking information because if you specify in your JSON schema that some attribute is not required and this attribute passes in some manner, this attribute is not sent to the client. So you can prevent leaking information. It's very important also the security aspect of your application. And the JSON schema is an IETF draft specification that describes the structure of your JSON file using the JSON format. After that, they started to develop the Fastify, which is a Node.js web framework, okay? Very, very easy to use to make your REST API in a very easy manner and rapidly. But, uh, and uh, as in Linux, everything is a file. In JavaScript, everything is an object. In Fastify, everything is a plugin. And uh, probably it's uh, the best features that it offers along with REST API because it can use it to make all the structure of your application that is uh, an object that I want to reach. Because uh, today, the architecture of uh, how our application is made is modular, is uh, very stable, but it requires a lot of code because uh, we have used the architect module taken from Cloud9 IDE project. So it's more, uh, more verbose. 
And uh, this is probably the best uh, thing that uh, you can have to make uh, uh, your REST API in an easy manner. And uh, it, even, it, it has even a very fast uh, logger that is called uh, Pino. And uh, you can also um, try it because it's an open source software. This is how you can create your uh, REST API and extract the code taken from the main site. Okay? So you require the library uh, specifying if you want uh, to see the log or not. Then you specify your route in a very easy manner. And if you want, as we previously seen, you can specify also the JSON scheme as a, as a second par parameter. Okay? It, uh, I suggest you to, to use it because the performance improve a lot. And then you, you put the, the server to listen in some ports. It's very easy. And in this manner, you can extend the functionality of the framework with a plugin using the register function of the framework and calling uh, a code that is present in an external file if you want. So you can structure your application in whatever manner you want. There are many other features that the framework offers. For example, it supports uh, a lot of middleware, um, even used by other frameworks, such as Express. It supports it, as is. It has uh, some plugins to, uh, to guarantee the order of uh, your module startup. It's very important. And there are many, many other features for testing, for management of the errors, and so on. And you have also uh, a lot of plugins. Some of them are maintained by the Fastify team. These are the core plugins. And there are also the community plugins maintained by the community. And the, if you use the core plugin, it is, uh, they, they, they are supported by long-term support by the Fastify team. If you need some help, you can go to the GitHub repository. You can go to Git Stack Overflow. It's an open source software, so you are invited to participate in the project. You can go to the site. You can read the documentation and so on. You can open pull request issue and so on. So participate in the project because um, I think it's, it's very good. This is uh, the link of uh, this presentation. If you take uh, a picture, if you want, and uh, you can leave some comments on join the platform. Um, I hope uh, you find interesting this presentation. Here are some links if you want to go deeply in the topics, and if you if this presentation make you interested in the topic, and if you want to improve the performance of your step your REST API, it, it depends uh, on your objective that you, that you have. I'm a senior engineer at uh, Netesis. I mainly work with Node.js, WebRTC technologies, and then uh, I work with, uh, also with uh, Asterisk, Void PBX system, NetServer Linux distribution, and I'm an, uh, also a con um, contributor to the Nextcloud open source project. You can find me also at some international conferences speaking about uh, Node.js, JavaScript, real-time communication. And uh, if you want to contact me, please feel free to do it uh, through the co social contact. Also, if you want to speak about your experience to put uh, Node.js server in production, to have uh, a speech with me uh, or uh, for um, whatever else. So. Truly thank you for your interest and uh, enjoy the conference. Thank you.